This is Keen Slusher with the Roanoke Regional Emerald Society, and you're listening to WROELP Radio Free Roanoke. Welcome to T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. Music, comedy, and conversation featuring HB. Wow. The Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't care. Now, on with the show. Are you ready, King? Yes, sir. Are you ready, HB? I'm ready, T-Bone. This is Radio Free Roanoke, and this is episode 169, T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. Keenan Slusher, president of the Roanoke Regional Emerald Society. Cheers. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Welcome to our show. Uh, we're going to get into this mini festival you've got going. It's called Celts at the Creeks. Yes, sir. And I want to know a little bit about your travels overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, first things first. First things first, Keenan. How do HB and I get in this Emerald Society? What is it? Uh, so, you get in, in the Emerald Society by just asking nicely, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> well, well, that might roll us out. <laughs> um, the, the Emerald Society is a nonprofit fraternal organization. Uh, we are in the process of getting our 501c3 established, so we're just uh, waiting on the IRS basically to get back to us. Uh, so, once that happens, we'll be a full nonprofit organization. Uh, we're still very new. In the area, mm -hmm. even though Emerald Societies themselves are not new at all, uh, there's many Emerald Societies all across the country, and even some like national level organizations. Uh, and so they're usually founded with two main goals. Number one, they're usually founded on public service, so law enforcement, professional firefighting, uh, sheriff's offices, that sort of oh, thing. Okay. And then the second goal is upkeeping Celtic traditions and heritage. So a lot of people in those professions have. Celtic heritage, and you know, a lot of those professions do Celtic traditions, like play the bagpipes for events and things, and so it's just a way to sort of support that, um, a group that's outside of those departments to support that going on within those professions. And so is there a Celtic community mm -hmm. here in Roanoke? Oh yeah, a bigger, <laughs> even though Roanoke's not that big of a place, it's uh, bigger than you think. Uh, people who, you know, are into piping and drumming and highly games athletes, um, there's quite a few in Roanoke and even, you know, Southwest Virginia generally. All right. Now, HB and I, uh, we know of the Boston Celtics mm -hmm. and Larry Bird and Bill Russell were the original uh, Celtics. Right. Uh, but uh, I didn't know that they was called Celtics mm -hmm. until uh, dear friend Diane McMichael said, mm -hmm. hey, you're wrong. It's Celtics. <laughs> right. And so tell us the difference. So really, the, when you're talking about the basketball team or any sort of sports team, they'll say Celtics. Celtics. But okay. if you're talking about the culture and the heritage, then it's Celtic. Why they changed it for those sports teams, I don't know, but that's just that's just how it is. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, you guys, the society, you mm -hmm. have something coming up. It's at the sure. end of August the 26th. Mm -hmm. uh, lots going on there. It's yep. Celts at the Creeks. Explain that. So our event, Celts at the Creek, is basically what has become of the Green Hill Highland Games. And I don't know if you're familiar with that event or have been to it at all, uh, but that event ran for many years. Um, a guy named Chad Clark was running it in conjunction with Roanoke County Parks and Rec. They did a great job. It was a good event. I helped them out for the past probably eight or nine years doing music and all sorts of things for them. Um, but all, you know, a lot of things happened, and so the way that the event was being run just couldn't continue the way it was. So we're sort of in the process of changing that over. We're still a lot of the same people who are doing that event, Chad included, helping me, but me and the Emerald Society are taking on that event and sort of changing it around, giving it some more stability, uh, hopefully. And so this year is sort of a transitional year. We want to do something to keep the momentum going mm -hmm. so that next year we can go back to hopefully like a full-scale Highland Games and Celtic Festival again. Is the, is the Highland Games, uh, were they held at Green Hill Park? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. so this year the mini festival, mm -hmm. kind of the springboard for next year, right. is going to be held at Explore Park, mm -hmm. and it's going to be on the front lawn of yep. the uh, Brew Tavern, which is operated by Twin Creeks. Yes, sir, yeah. Brew. They're right there, right on the, they have a lot of grassy areas, it's not a very big area, that's right. why it's yeah. our, our mini festival. <laughs> but we are going to have all the elements of a regular Celtic festival there, you know, with the piping and drumming and other traditional music, uh, dancing, we'll have some athletics there, just it'll be a lot smaller of an athletic field. Well, time um, out, time out, time out. Can you, when you say <laughs> athletic things, what will be a demonstration of something athletic there? Then? Is Chad sure. going to be there? Yes, yep. All right, what's he going to do? So, he, yeah. he will have several athletes there, including some like world-level Highland Games athletes. 
Um, we're going to be doing events that don't require as much room, so like a weight over bar. So instead of throwing the weight for a distance, they're just throwing it straight up as far as they can. What, um, they throw a weight straight up? Mm-hmm. Yep, and it goes, it's like a, uh, like a pole vault bar, yeah. basically, and you throw it straight up over your head. Um, and try to get out of the way quickly enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the important part. That's the key. Yeah, right. I think I've seen that on TV right. before. Mm -hmm. I've seen yep. some of those type of games. Yep. Yeah. And they also do a, a, a stone event, where they're like stone lifting, and that's pretty traditional. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a high like level. A yeah, the stone. Picking pick up the stones, yeah. and yeah, if you can get it, get it to your shoulder, or if you're really strong, pick it up and press it over your head. So. Ooh. Um, yeah, it should be. It should I'd be, be good as a rock. Yeah, <laughs> I just fall off. Yeah, right. Hey, it takes all kinds to make it work. You know? What about like uh, does somebody pick up like a pole and throw a pole? That's what I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Or? So then the caber toss, which is the one you're talking about. What's it called? Caber toss. Caber toss. Uh, and caber is the original uh, Scottish Gaelic word for tree, basically. So that's why it's oh. the caber toss. Okay. Uh, this yeah. is a very educational show. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. you said you wanted to be Throwing boring. out those nuggets. Right. <laughs> Just a little bit here and there. Yeah. I don't have much, but uh, anyway, so that event requires more room than we have this year. So that one, unfortunately, will be happening on the 26th. However, next year, for the full Highland Games, that'll definitely, that's always the highlight of the show, so we have to have that one if we have the space. Oh, okay. How far could... How far could a person reasonably expect to throw a, a big pole? Um, if you've done it before and you're good, you could throw it pretty far. I mean, the object with that one is to actually, instead yeah. of throwing it for distance, you're actually throwing it for accuracy. Yeah, aren't you? It, it, you, you stand it up mm -hmm. and you hold it, yep. and then the, the action of let it go forward a little bit and then like project it out. And right, so, the, so you're aiming at something. You're aiming at a accuracy of your throw. Okay. Um, so like perfect caber toss would be you pick it up and you stable it and you run up a little ways and then when you plant and throw it, it flips in the rim up once, once and it lands perfectly straight out in front of you. Oh, That's, and they measure it like a clock face. So the 12 o'clock throw is the perfect throw. Gotcha. And if you're off at like, you know, 11 or one or something, that's less points because of the point system than right. 12. So it's like a landing in gymnastics. Right, system. exactly. Yeah, that's what like that. the telephone point. Do they do they throw a a, a, a keg or anything? You so, know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, some Highland Games will do a keg toss. I'm not okay. sure if Chad will be including that this is that, year. Is that empty or full? Um, it's filled to different weights. Okay. So, yeah. so usually what they'll do is like uh, a popular one is have mini keg series where they'll have one that is empty and then the mini kegs will be filled to like you know. 50, 100 pounds, whatever, and then right. uh, still, you know, have to throw them in sequence. Will you have any catapults there? Unfortunately, no catapults. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, next year <laughs> we can have a catapult. I love that. I awesome. see where that would have some. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you mentioned the bagpipers, mm -hmm. right? And are those local bagpipers? And yep. How many are there? Yep. Uh, they're they're all local. That'll be at our event. Um, and there are quite a few local bagpipers, like I said, more than you'd expect. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of them, actually. I've been, I've been piping for a, a while. Um, but we should have the Virginia Highlands Pipes and Drums, which they've been around for a very long time. That they, band. They have, uh, would I have seen those in a parade? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're the, they've been staple in the Running Valley Parades since well, before I was born. So yeah. I, it's been a long time. Um, and then a newer band called the Appalachian Piping Academy. Um, and it's uh, one of my good friends, he's starting a, basically a piping school here in Roanoke. And so he's trying to uh, do some things that you wouldn't necessarily expect with the pipes. You know, like everyone knows Scott and the Rave and the parade tunes and things, but yeah. he's trying to branch out and do more of like a performance band mm -hmm. um, type of music playing with them. So they do hymns and old time music and all sorts of things too. Nice. So when you say there's going to be live music mm -hmm. at the uh, Celts at the Creek mm -hmm. Mini Festival, that's the music you're going to hear. Yep, the real deal. Yep, yeah, for sure. And it's all local guys. And there's a, you know, so you have the piping and drumming, and you also have the Irish traditional music. Um, there's a lot of players who are going to be there playing that sort of music too. All right. Now, what about uh, food? Are you going to have any? Uh, what's it called? Haggis? <laughs> no, I wish. I, there you wish. Know, with, yeah, I, I love that. Well, so, okay. so I think it's great. I don't know if you ever had it, but nope. I, I highly recommend it. All right. Um, but they're getting a mini festival. We weren't able to do a lot of things that we normally do. Uh, so 
as it is this year, Twin Creeks is just doing all the food in-house um, themselves. So they're the ones doing the food because it's at their location. All right, I hear they have good food. There, there is good food for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, so they'll have the information table mm -hmm. and uh, tell us what the, uh, what the admission is. So the admission is $5 cheap a person, uh, kids 12 and under are free. Good and deal. first responders and their immediate families are also free. Very good deal. Yeah. So yeah. lunch with a refreshment. All right, exactly. There. Yep, yep, Twin Creeks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep, get to practice in a couple pints here. Yeah. What's your favorite yeah. Irish beer? Um, I gotta go Guinness. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, sound, it sounds too cliche name, but it's just, it's, yeah. it's just too classic, man, as far as Irish beers go. Yeah. Yeah. So the the mini festival is going to be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yep. So uh, after party. Oh yeah, there's definitely an after party. <laughs> Tell us about happen. it. Uh, there's not. It's sort of a, a loosely planned after party. So any, basically, any time from 4 p.m. and Twin Creeks will be able to be out of there off their lawn by 10 p.m. So uh, hopefully. So wiggle room. Man. Oh yeah. Okay. Room to eat Some and light time, drink more yeah. and, yeah. and uh, have. Hopefully, lots of music playing going on and hanging out, and so it should be should be good, nice, uh, family friendly. Event. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, all right. Let me ask you this, Ken, uh, and then we'll close out with the festival. But before we get to that, have you been overseas? Have you been to the motherland? Have you been to? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ireland yeah, or Wales, the Scotland. Yeah, I did not get to kiss the Barney Stone, but I, but I have been to uh, both Scotland and Ireland, yeah. and I spent I did a whole exchange program over there, so I was going to the University of Glasgow in Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, so wow. I spent quite a quite a bit of time over there. Uh, I've even got married over there. My wife's American, but we still got married over there. Um, so I, I spent I, I spent quite a bit of time over there. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. All right, HB and I like to travel. Mm -hmm. So tell us where, where would be your best kept, kept secrets to travel in Ireland or Scotland? Um, I think that in Scotland, uh, everyone goes to Edinburgh. Yes, they do. And yes, the capital. It's a beautiful city. I, I get why people go there one day. Yeah, yeah you, you absolutely need to. Um, but Glasgow as a city is pretty cool. It's definitely more modern in a lot of ways than Edinburgh just because a lot of the older buildings and things that were there were just totally run down they had to sort of revamp things a lot um, but it's in that way it feels like a younger city uh, with a lot more cool stuff going on there's the for me being a bag piper the national piping center is there so like that was oh, sort of my, yeah. my personal mecca um, then they have a museum that's really cool if you're into museums um, and there's some really cool pubs there like the three the three big traditional music pubs in glasgow are the Ben Nevis, the Park Bar, and the Island, and they're all like within a block of one another. Oh, and so wow. uh, yeah. almost any weeknight you can go down there and find live or just music going on. Right, so uh, and golf's a big deal over there. Right? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go up to, on Isn't the- Isn't that where it was originated in Scotland? Yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting game because a lot of like other European countries played it, but sort of the modern game that we think of as golf was really came from Scotland and like sort of on the East Coast, like near St. Andrews and that sort of oh, area. Okay. Um, which is a cool part of the country. I really liked going to the West Coast, uh, the Isle of Skye, and some other villages up there. Um, and then it's actually where I got married, it's on the West Coast up there. Oh, nice. So Ireland, what would be a, a neat place to go visit in Ireland? Um, I was really surprised at how much I liked Belfast as a city. Um, it's Northern Ireland, a lot of people don't think of that as, you know, like Ireland, it's not like the Cliffs of Moher or Dublin, or, um, you know, something that's like classically, when you think of Ireland, you'll think of that, but I thought it was a really neat city. And there's some other really cool places around there, like the Giant's Causeway, which is a really cool stone formation around the coast there, and right, it's right outside of Belfast. Um, and so I really like Northern Ireland. I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time down south, uh, so maybe that's why I'm biased, but I thought it was really cool. All right, HB mentioned the Blarney Stone, mm -hmm. and you've never kissed it. I know, unfortunately. But that's okay, you've got time. <laughs> but if you kiss it, mm -hmm. can you, what does the legend say? Well, what, is it, what does it give you? It gives you something. Right? Yes, yeah, it's supposed to give you the uh, the gift of gab. The gift of <laughs> gab. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be uh, 
Yeah, because all week I got that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, might push you over the edge. You might have too much. Yeah. <laughs> Overflowing with, with rhetoric. We, we're more like a bee at it. Barney Stone, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> and then the Barney Stone, if that's, that's a piece of limestone attached to a castle, mm -hmm. a Barney Castle, yep. right? Yep, and you have to lean it. You have to lay yeah. down and lean yeah. out and pull yourself back over oh, the edge. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, yeah, yep. yeah. You wouldn't have a lot after that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, those are places for us to go. So when we're over there, is there any food you'd recommend? Uh, you mentioned haggis already. I'd absolutely try haggis while you're there uh, in Scotland. Uh, it's If you like sort of different foods, then I think that would be good. What's um, comparable to haggis in America? Like bologna or chicken? Um, or what? I would say like, nothing. Sausage. I would say like um, almost like a meatloaf. It's like a spicy meatloaf with like a little bit of like liver flavor because there's some intestines in it. So if you can get past that, then. Um, I, I think it's really good. Then you have, and always with haggis, you have haggis, what they call neeps and tatties, which are uh, turnips and potato. And they're always matched and they're always together. So yeah. that's, um, that's mm. the way to do it for sure. All right. And then uh, the people, mm -hmm. Scotland, Ireland, friendly to Americans? Yeah, I, I had a great time with, with basically everyone. You know, like if you're in a big city, you know, like Glasgow, Edinburgh or something, it's like any big city here. People aren't quite as warm and friendly, but if you go outside the countryside, no, everyone was great. I, uh, the village near where I got married was a little village called Erisig, and um, they were awesome. Like, they were great when the, the time I spent there with them. So how long ago was that? Um, I got married in 2018, so okay. I was there from from 2018 through 20 like the first part of 2019. Okay, so cool. Well, so, you can see we went all in just for you. No, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. The Coleman's hat, that's from uh, uh, Irish pub up mm -hmm. in Syracuse. Okay. And then, of course, Larry Bird, right. Davis' practice jersey. I love the uh, <laughs> Irish pub, anyway. Right. Uh, where do you go locally to get the Irish vibe or these Celtic vibe? Mm -hmm. Is there a place to go locally? The best place locally now, uh, all the, the true, like, Irish pubs are sort of gone. Flannery's yeah. was the last one. Right. Uh, that one closed down years ago. But if you go on Monday nights down to Big Lick Brewing, they have an Irish session there. Yes, they do. Uh, so a lot of people who are going to actually play there on a weekly basis are going to be playing at our event too. Um, so that's probably the best like Irish pub experience to get locally anymore. Right. I saw where they had like an Irish jam band mm -hmm. on uh, Mondays mm -hmm. at Big Lick. Yep. Brewing. Yep. That's okay. Exactly so that'd be a good place. Yep. All right, my friend. Uh, We'll let you have the last word, HB. Any any last thoughts from you? Gosh, I'm. Uh, you know, I've always heard this. We we recognize green as an mm -hmm. Irish color. Mm -hmm. Is it blue over there? Somebody was. Do you, is that something? Um, the Scottish identify more with blue, but the Irish identify more with green. And it's just like if you look at their flags, if there's green and in the flag of Ireland, and there's blue in the flag of Scotland, so that tends to be oh, okay. sort of there. Their identification, and it's to tell you the truth, Ireland is extremely green, like very green, oh, like just yeah. like if you walk outside, you're on a car driving down the highway, and like everything is just like vibrantly green. So it makes sense. Lush, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Foliage, yeah. yeah. Okay, I've always heard that. All right, well, always, give us the last word on the mini festival mm -hmm. and the Emerald Society. Anything else? The floor is yours. Sure, thank you. So, uh, thanks again for having me here. It's always great to come by. Uh, the festival is August 26th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. with an after party. We'll have all sorts of things going on that you'd expect at a regular Celtic festival. Highland Games, many. Piping and drumming, a few. Music, plans, <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple vendors. So we'll have everything, something for everyone, but it'll just be on a much smaller scale. Food um, and drink. Food and drink, yeah, all done by Twin Creeks. And it's, everything I've had from this has been great. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, and then the Emerald Society itself, I said we're a new foundation in the area, uh, founded by first responders, for yes. first responders Very cool. locally, and everything's yeah. done locally and kept locally. Um, and so that's sort of something that we're continuing to work on and build up and will be a nonprofit very soon. And yeah, come support both us and the event for sure. The fact that you uh, have uh, the first responders as part of your mission, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, if you run into King at the Delta on the Creek, give me your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! A word to the wise. Uh, all right, my friend, Aaron, go Rob. Yes. All right, let's go.